This is a presentation that, in contrast to all the other presentations today, is resolutely not at all practical. So if you come here for business perspectives, you may be slightly disappointed. Um, uh, I've given versions of this talk in Italy at the Pisa Pearl Workshop and at the London Pearl Workshop. Um, and uh, I keep on getting interested in new stuff and uh, changing my mind about what I'm talking about. So this is the current incarnation of, uh, of, of things. So uh, if you see this at uh, London, it's slightly, uh, slightly developed. Um, version three. Okay, and uh, basically, um, functional programming suddenly became trendy in the Perl world about uh, uh, three or four years ago. Um, Larry Wall, uh, the creator of Perl, actually started learning Haskell. Um, a hacker called um, Aubrey Tang uh, wrote the first fairly realistic um, implementation of Perl 6 in this language called Haskell, which is a purely functional programming language, which in the past had been used by people like academics and academics. And well, uh, some people in finance also use it because uh, they like the fact that you can reason about things and you can remove all certain classes of bugs. People in finance don't like bugs because they lose money. So it is useful in, in, in some parts of industry, not greatly used in uh, a lot of the areas that we use Perl for, but interesting nonetheless. And as I say, a lot of people in the Perl community got really interested in it and, uh, and started learning it. So there's some interesting stuff. And when you bring it into Perl, um, then strange things happen when you combine the two. Now, one of the themes uh, today is actually a model called Devil Declare, which that evil man there uh, actually wrote, and it's a way of creating new syntax in Perl. And then passed on to a much better maintainer. The current maintainer, uh, that's Florian's name, right? Yes. It's, uh, it's also very, very good. But uh, it was your fault originally. So. Um, okay, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that, but not in too much detail because it makes my head explode. And, uh, uh, currently, um, there's a very, very nice model called Moose X Declare. I don't know whether um, you guys have been using Moose, which is an object-oriented um, system for Perl. And Moose X Declare allows you to write things that look very much like Java or a sensible object-oriented programming language, uh, but within Perl. So I'm not going to talk about that. That's OO stuff. I'm going to talk about this uh, weird functional programming stuff instead. Um, and that's some of the things that I've been talking about at uh, uh, different versions of this talk. So, um, fittingly, because we're in Manchester, um, about five minutes taxi ride from the Curry Mile, we're going to talk about curry. Um, and not that sort of curry, sadly, but uh, um, we'll be going after this. Um, so curry functions are like functions, except they take one argument at a time. So, for example, here, you've got an add function, which takes two arguments and returns the, uh, the sum of the arguments. So I'm kind of lying to you because, well, that's two arguments and I just told you they took one at a time. So if that was a curry function, you would be able to pass it one argument. Can you actually see that uh, there? Because I've got a sort of nice salmon pink kind of colour on there, which I think it shows up very well. So if you, if you pass the add five, that's the first argument, this uh, dollar left here. Um, and then you get back a function reference which you can then call using this second argument. So you basically do call it the two arguments, but you only do them one at a time. Um, and first of all, you may be asking yourself, why, for the love of God, why? And I'll hopefully give you some examples of, uh, of, of why we want to do that later on. And in fact, you can do this in pure Perl um, using closures. So you can have your uh, addition subroutine, which takes the first argument, and then returns a new subroutine, which takes a second argument, and then returns a value. It's not particularly pretty. So, you know, people do write this kind of thing. There's, there's various good reasons to do that. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not very nice to read. So, I wrote a model called subcurry, which uses devil declare, which gives a syntax very much like the one that I just gave you, where you just declare your two uh, variables, and it just does the magic behind the scenes. Obviously, you can't actually use the word sub, because that's a pearl reserved word. So we've created a new thing called uh, um, Declarator, hence devil declare, called curry, 
And what that does is uh, it realizes that you've uh, written the web curry and then it does evil shit with your source while you're actually passing it, while you're actually compiling it. Um, and what it does is turns it into something very much like what I showed you, only, well, a little bit more complicated than, than that uh, very simple example. So, for example, uh, it'll do things like returning the subroutine if you didn't pass it any arguments. So, why would you do that? Well, okay, if you call it with two arguments, five and six, it adds them. If you call it with one argument, it returns a function that adds five to its next argument. And if you call it with no arguments, it returns a function that, if it's called with two arguments, will add them together. So that's effectively the same as uh, a reference to the function add, which I think is quite cute. Um, it also does things like checking what if you called it with three arguments. At that point, it should blow up and it should give you something more informative than uh, dereferenced uh, a, a non-function value or something like that, which is what you get if you if you didn't do this sort of nicety. And also, um, it does actually handle that syntax as well. So if you call it with two arguments, you want to pretend it's just a normal function with no kind of you know mad, magic going on in the background. You can do that as well makes it a little bit more convenient. Okay, so why would you want to do this? Well, first of all, you've got this uh, idea partial application. You might have a function that has three arguments, but you always want the first argument to be something. For example, you've got a, um, you're searching a web page for a certain type of tag. So you want to, um, to return a function that searches for this kind of tag. So you take them, take, two arguments, for example, uh, the tag name and the HTML screen, uh, text that you're looking for, and you return a specialized function that, that deals with, uh, with that particular type of uh, data. And basically, currying allows you to have this everywhere. So you might think, okay, I can think of a couple of cases where this is actually useful. And having it everywhere means you, you, you start changing your APIs, changing the code that you write to take advantage of that uh, all the time. And in purely functional languages, so these very academic languages that we're, we're not writing in, um, they're actually quite useful. And so it's a, it's a hunch, if anything, um, that it could be useful in Perl. And there is some evidence because uh, some people do use it in Perl, though not everywhere because it's not built into the language. So one example uh, of something we can clean up a bit is class successor, which is a way of making objects uh, in, in Perl, if we inherit from this object called class accessor, we suddenly get this class um, class method called add accessor, which gives us a foo attribute, uh, a bar attribute, and a baz attribute. And that's quite ugly, because well, this underscore package, of course, means the package we're currently in, which is my class. Um, and this add accessor, which lives in class accessor, has a, takes in the class and the accessor, and then it does stuff to, to create the accessor. Um, now, what you do when you import a module uh, is that you tell, during the import phase of Perl, you say, okay, this is the caller, and I want to change, to set their method to this particular uh, subroutine reference. So I'm, I'm going to give it some code that it's going to put in its own namespace. And of course, that doesn't have to be a pure reference. That could be a function that returns a reference. So if we think of this uh, currying idea, every stage in a curry function is returning a, a function reference. So we could actually have this has um, function here and curry it with dollar caller, so the package name. And Moose, which is this object-oriented system, you take advantage of this by importing, when, when you use Moose, it gives you a very specialized version of has, which is the, the, the uh, equivalent of add accessor uh, using class accessor. And that is actually a piece of code that runs my class has for me. So it carries the um, class name that you invoke the, uh, the function on. Yeah, that's not how this works at all. It's how it's, it's how it's explored to work. It's, it's not strictly speaking curry, but it's um, yeah <laughs> for the purpose of simplification. Um, so that's an example of uh, of normal curry. I'm going to talk quickly about sections because these are they're they're quite cute. Um, in Perl, you can't take a reference to an operator. So if you want to say 
instead of writing that um, function I had before, left plus right, I wanted to take a reference to the plus operator, you can't do it. It's a terrible shame. Uh, because, for example, in Haskell, you can do it. And we're not going to let these academic languages get one over on us, because we are at the Perl, the most powerful programming language in the world. Um, okay. Uh, and the other thing you can do, which is quite nice in, in Haskell, is that you can, um, you can curry these operators. So this plus two is actually a function that adds two to its argument. Um, so it turns out that using devil declare again, we can actually write the syntax in, in Perl. So, uh, well, but not, not exactly, because we need a, um, a declarator to say, do this evil stuff with the source string. So I've called it op for operator. So op plus is a function that adds two numbers together, and op plus two is a function that adds two to something. You probably trap the backslash in that. Sorry? You could probably trap the backslash and do backslash plus. Really? <laughs> well, it's got to create an it's, it's going to, you just, need, you just need to find a hook when the parser's about to create the nref. And what it would have to, if it was... Well, you, you, you just hook in the same way as you hook in for a declarator at that point. Yeah. So long as there's an op constructed at the right point, we can hijack the function pointer in the PL check okay. array and just nick it. You have to, uh, I'll talk to you about that a bit later. Um, now, there's one slight uh, problem here. Um, minus one is obviously a function that um, takes one away from uh, the next argument, and one minus is a function that takes the argument away from one. So they're actually kind of the opposite. Um, so one minus is nice and easy, actually. That's uh, currying minus one, because the next argument is the right-hand side argument. So for that one, we've got to use another function called flip, which takes a function and turns it into one that acts exactly the same way, except it swaps the arguments around. Um, so that's defined like, like so. Curry flip with a function and a left and a right argument, and it calls the function passing in right and left. So flip minus is act like that. Instead of minus 5, 1, being four, flip minus, called with five and one, would give you minus four. So, um, prev, uh, a function that gives you the number below what you passed it in is flip minus, curried with the argument one. And this example of using flip, um, either with just dollar fm, just the function passed into it, or with the function and one of the values passed into it, is an extension of this idea that once you've got partial application and you can use it everywhere without thinking about it, you suddenly get these advantages to, to do kind of clever stuff with it. And so, one of the examples you often get in Perl tutorials is, write a function that when you give it something, it'll say, hello, that thing. And that's that subroutine written using uh, using sections. This is a function that prepends hello space to its argument. The Greek world returns hello world. And if you want to double the list of numbers, you can pass it the operator times two. And there's a slight wart here in the Perl's map function doesn't actually take a function, it takes a block or an expression, so you have to actually... Sorry, that's me. Um, so, just a few more minutes. Um, so we've actually got to call, um, to call that function on, uh, on dollar underscore, that should be in there, it's like a state. And you can do various things like um, a function that runs a regular expression on its argument uh, there, for example. So you can curry with basically anything that's in Perl op as a, as a binary operator. Now it falls down slightly if you do something a bit more complicated, because obviously we don't want to just have like a Q thing function that adds two numbers together is fine. We're, we're, we're going to at some point write more complicated programs. So if you want to convert from uh, Fahrenheit into centigrade, 
you actually got two sets of, uh, of uh, mathematical operations you want to run. And if you did that with, uh, with these um, sections, you'd have to take this uh, minus 32 operator, um, pass the first argument for this function into it, and then pass that to uh, this operator, which multiplies by 5 divided by 9. And that's kind of ugly, because basically, all this stuff here, this sub, this uh, dereferencing, passing an argument, and so on, is boilerplate. Um, it, it, it's, it's kind of incidental to the fact that you're basically um, <coughs> minus 32 and times it by 5 divided by 9. So really, what we'd like to do is just completely compact that and turn it into a pipeline, like so. Take the argument, minus 32 from it, and then multiply by 5 divided by 9. So we're doing functional composition. Uh, and that works um, <coughs> using subcompose, which is uh, uh, basically a very very simple module that will run function composition on two functions as long as their superclass is subcompose, um, which is handily the base class for subcarrier and subsection. And it would be really nice to, to call it on any kind of function, apart from that doesn't work. Uh, Yet. Are you, are you going to fix it? No, I'm going to volunteer somebody else to fix it. I'm going to involve right and say I'm not doing that. I'm okay, it's so far. I, I, I volunteer not to do that as well. <laughs> um, so, this kind of stuff here is called point free programming to people that like it. People that love it call it point less programming. It's one of those things like uh, obfuscation in Perl that's completely pointless. Um, it does allow you to develop some programming skills, and it's surprisingly elegant sometimes, and surprisingly unreadable uh, at other times. It's basically obfuscation for, for uh, uh, matching types. Um, but, in fact, you can actually write almost any program uh, using point-free notation, so you don't need to give arguments dollar left, dollar right, dollar x. You can actually completely uh, ignore this. So even something like squaring a number, which takes an argument twice, you could have a, a dup function which returns the argument twice and then pass it to uh, pipeline it to the uh, times function. And dup is easy enough to write. You take an argument and you return it uh, listed twice. Now you might think, could you carry that with x2, like so? And you can't because that's in scalar context, so that's going to return the argument uh, concatenated with itself. So. I could do with creating some syntax to be able to do uh, sections with a list context. Um, but I haven't quite got there yet. And the light relief at this point is that I think we're going to go to the pub. So thank you very much. <laughs>